A reading from Luke's Gospel, the 12th chapter, verses 49 through 56. Listen for God's word. I came to bring fire to the earth, and how I wish it were already kindled. I have a baptism with which to be baptized, and what stress I am under until it is completed. Do you think that I have come to bring peace to the earth? No, I tell you, but rather division. From now on, five in one household will be divided, three against two and two against three. They will be divided, father against son and son against father, mother against daughter and daughter against mother, mother mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law and daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. He also said to the crowds, when you see a cloud rising in the west, you immediately say it is going to rain. And so it happens. And when you see the south wind blowing, you say there will be scorched heat. And it happens. You hypocrites. You know how to interpret the appearance of earth and sky. But why do you not know how to interpret the present time? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let me start off by saying that for those of you who were here last week and are wondering, the soundtrack for this week's text would be Fire and Rain by James Taylor. From time to time, people will say something to me like, you know, John, I just don't like the Old Testament. I mentioned this recently, in fact. I just don't like the Old Testament. All that judgment and wrath and fire. But I like the New Testament because it's all about Jesus and love. I think the next time someone says something like that to me, I'm going to tell them to go and read today's passage and come back and tell me what they think now. Because Jesus really gives it to us today. Jesus tells us that he is coming to bring fire to the earth. Instead of bringing peace, he is bringing division. And talk about Christian family values, he says that families are going to be pitted against one another, father against son, mother against daughter, And to top all of that off, he calls his followers a bunch of hypocrites because they are more interested in watching the Weather Channel than in really seeing what's going on in the world. Okay, well, that's not not exactly what he says. But if he were talking to us today, it might sound like that. Fire. Division. Hypocrites. These are hard words, no doubt about it. And to understand them, we have to understand their context. You see, Jesus knew exactly what was ahead for his followers. These are hard words, yes. But they were words of warning spoken about harder times to come. Times when to to even speak of Christ, to speak the name of Christ, would would cause someone to be judged as either insane or, or maybe even an act of treason. Times when to live by Jesus' way would be to invite open criticism, scorn, anger, pity, or even death. Times when families would be divided among themselves by the fire burning in their midst. Now, of course, to our sensitive modern or maybe postmodern ears, these words seem harsh. We perhaps like to think that we are exempt from these kind of words in in our times. 
Maybe. Maybe so. Maybe these words were just meant for, for back then, and, but not so much now. Maybe the time of fire is passing us by. The fire that Jesus wishes were already kindled. The fire that he said he came to bring. And maybe it seems this way because the idea of fire is associated in many minds with something that is negative. Fire is often associated with, with death and destruction. We think about the fires we see about on the news and neighborhoods, entire towns being wiped out. So we think of fire with death and destruction, especially when the Bible speaks of fire being from God. The God who said on more than one occasion that his wrath goes forth like fire and that his anger burns like fire. And thinking of the end of the age as Jesus surely was as he spoke the words we have heard. Well, thinking of the end of the age and of the time of judgment just seems like it makes some preachers and I think some congregations a little crazy, a little wound up about this whole idea of wrath. God would never do anything like this, some say. God's not wrathful. But if God were, well, we just don't really want to talk about it or think about it, do we? So we go on our merry way, never thinking of judgment. Never speaking of pain and death caused on account of God's plan for the world. Because, well, these things... They aren't nice. They upset me. I don't want to hear about that type of stuff. Of course, there are also those who th seem to think that God being really angry, that God being wrathful, God being judgmental is a good thing. They like that. And perhaps they rub their hands in glee when they hear that message. Indeed, some make fortunes prophesying doom and speaking of eternal life as if it were some kind of heavenly insurance policy that can be purchased by sending in donations. They babble on as if there is no mystery as to how God is going to wrap this story up. They point fingers at the signs of the time and try to declare their full meaning and in the exact sequence of things to come, even though Jesus himself said that no man not even the Son knew the time, only the Father. And so often we who listen to those who speak of the fire that Jesus spoke about as being mainly about the wrath of God are misguided by what they hear. Misguided by some to mindless hope and no sense of passion or purity or purpose. No sense of how darkness cannot exist in the light. And how light will drive out the darkness. Or misguided by others to stern and unloving righteousness, self-righteousness. To judgments about those other people that may or may not be warranted. And which in any case are judgments God alone is to make. But whichever place we end up. We cannot get past the fact that Jesus did talk about these things. Jesus said, I have come to bring fire to the earth and how I wish it were already kindled. Do you think I have come to bring peace on earth? No, I tell you, but rather division. You hypocrites. You know how to interpret the appearance of the earth and the sky. But why do you not know how to interpret present time how do we understand all of this how do we make sense of all this in some kind of meaningful way well perhaps we can start out by trying to understand something about fire you see fire can be very bad but fire can also be a very good thing but good or bad one thing we can say is this, fire cannot be ignored. It was fire that Moses saw 
in a bush. Fire is all over the Bible. It was fire which brought the people, which led the people by night through the wilderness. It was fire that touched the lips of the prophet Isaiah and called him to proclaim God to Israel. It was fire that fell upon and consumed the altar of Baal when Elijah prayed. Is not my word like fire, says the Lord, and like a hammer that breaks a rock in pieces? It was fire that fell upon the heads of the apostles and of all the believers gathered there in the upper room. You see, fire can mean many things. Fire can do many things. Fire can cook our food or burn it beyond recognition. Fire can warm us or fire can destroy us. Fire can mean many things. Fire can do many things. But remember, fire can never be ignored. I have come to bring fire to the earth, Jesus says, and how I wish it were already kindled. I have a baptism with which to be baptized, and what stress I am under until it is completed. Jesus wanted fire to come upon the earth. And there are those who see that as a, as a bad thing, as an unkind thing. As words that should be understand, perhaps, understood perhaps as coming from a man who was facing death very soon and was therefore somewhat fixated on the whole question of judgment, the whole question of making choices, the whole question of discerning one thing from another, of dividing good from bad, the eternal from the earthly. But I ask you this, how is that bad? Is it bad that a man who is about to die should be focused on eternal, important things? How is this bad news, this fire that is capable of doing so much good, this fire that Jesus is yearning to be kindled? And that makes me wonder, what would happen to us if this fire of which Jesus speaks burned in our lives and in our spirits as well. Fire to, to burn off the dross. Fire to bring out the purity of the gold and silver that is within us. Spiritual wealth beyond price. Fire to inflame us to care and bless one another with all the gifts of faith. Fire in the way that it purified the lips of Isaiah. In the way fire consumed the altar of the false gods. In the way fire led the people through the darkness, through the wilderness. What if we had that fire? We need that fire. And the good news here is that Jesus came to bring it. Fire to inflame our hearts with the love of God and with love for all that God has made, for all whom God has made. And friends, that fire has indeed come and it is still coming and it will come again. But this coming of fire is not easy. Fire never is. Again, fire cannot be ignored. I have come to bring fire to the earth, Jesus says, but note this, this fire is not so much about judgment. It is not so much about wrath as it is about mercy. It is about God dividing the day from the night, the darkness from the light, so that we all may see this fire is coming to purify and refine. It is about love overcoming hate. Life overcoming death. So that we might be united forever with all that lives. 
It is about laughter instead of sorrow. About wholeness instead of division. God, you see, just might have a very positive means of purifying and refining both us and the world through fire. God might use forces that, while reacted to with great opposition, will actually bring healing. God might use forces that, while leading to division among people, will ultimately be uniting. The theologian Tejar de Chardin wrote, Someday, after we have mastered the winds, the waves, the tides, and gravity, we shall harness the energies of love. Then, for the second time in history, man will have once again discovered fire. The energy of love. An energy that is like fire, able to lead us in the wilderness. An energy that is like light, which permits us to see. An energy that is like water, which refreshes and makes new. An energy that is like air, that allows us to live. An energy that is like earth, upon which the kingdom of God will come. The divisions of this world are temporary. The peace is even now in our midst, and it is eternal. And our prayer, as those who walk through the wilderness with only the fire to lead us, our prayer ought to be that all those who now find themselves in darkness may be lit by the fire that we see, and warmed by the fire that warms us, and refined by the fire that refines us, and be led to that place where they will call us, even as we on now on this day call them, our brothers and our sisters. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.